Hello, 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 my periscope peeps. I just thought I'd come on here by paint some um, underpainting for this portrait I'm working on. I'm working on this little uh, King Charles Cavalier. Hi, good night. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Hello, Dawn. Thanks for stopping by. So I'm uh, going to start doing the back body. Hi. I'm going to do the underpainting, which is what goes, it sort of looks like a watercolor, and it's the base for my oil paints to build up the layers. Um, this is what I have so far. And so the back part of the body, I'm going to put on a layer underneath this. helps bring this um, front part of the body a little forward, and it also will not let any of the paint like blend with this, so this will stay nice and crisp on top of it. So I'm going to create a new layer and just label it something that I'll remember. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than willing to try to demo or explain or whatever. And then, you know, we, in the meantime, we could talk about the weather or TV or whatever you feel like talking about. All right. So... Here's a picture of this dog's back and tail. And I got this picture just um, from Zoe's mommy today. And then this way I can kind of see what coloring and spots I need to put on. So, I need a little bit of a bigger brush than my detail brush. I wanna, there we go. If you see this little circle, that's my brush size. And you should see it, it's getting bigger really fast. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna take some basic colors and just kind of um, put some down in here. So I hope everybody's having a great day today. I want to get a little bit of that white. I'm happy to have this time here right now, actually, because um, I've been having a heck of a month trying to get time in my studio. Um, I have another job. That I uh, I'm a nanny part time, but for the last three weeks it has been full time because the grandfather had back surgery, and so I'm sort of like filling in. But it's um, starting to really stuck into my uh, studio room time, and it's bothering me. I hate saying that. Hope he gets well soon. <gasps> Alright. So she has a little bit of... And there's like a little white spot up in here too. I think there's like a little white and a little black. So you can see how I'm taking some of these markings and I'm sort of estimating them on here. Um, and it's a totally different pose, so I have to reimagine it. So now I'm going to take my blender and make that nice and big too.
So it's going to create sort of like a big watercolor. It's just basically covering the space. And then I will come in with my detail brush and start painting details. And my paints act pretty much like real um, oils. So as I paint them, the um, oils will blend in and make a natural blend with the um, base paint, which is what I'm putting down right now. And it also is a little bit of my roadmap to tell me. I want to turn this off for a minute. So it looks like nothing was going on, but it's really that my base color is the same color as that um, background that I was using. But it also told me like when colors um, are changing for the markings on this dog, and it'll also help give me a little bit of hair direction without always flipping back to my sketch. Need a little more of that gray up in here. Okay. I need you right now. Don't let me down. So then when I turn the sketch off, I'll still have a little bit of um, this. Uh, I'm saving it again because I've been having some technical difficulties. So I'm saving a lot. I'm working on getting a new uh, video card here. Hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping by, spending some time with me tonight. No, no. I want to get thanks for the hearts. I really appreciate it. So this is a digital oil painting. I'm just starting to build up the layers here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, or we can just talk. I'm just establishing. Um, this is an underpainting, and it's just kind of like a really loose watercolor painting that my oil paints will react to. And then, so now I'm just establishing hair um, color and flow. And you can tell by the details on my other layers of where it's going to go. Especially like if I zoom in, let's see, it's pretty detailed. But it's just building up layers. You build them up, build them up, build them up. 
I have this little, I have a little paper picture here that I'm kind of looking at. Touch of this white here because it is an identifying marker on Zoe here, and um, you wouldn't see a whole lot of it from the angle that I have her sitting, but I want to have enough of it be seen. And also, there's this spot here on her back that is white. So then this hair is going to come this direction. And overlay in here a little bit. I'm sort of just blocking out hair directions and color right now. And it will slowly, slowly start building up layers. And if you sit here and hang out long enough, all of a sudden you'll be like just hanging out, enjoying yourselves, and you'll look up and you'll be like, oh, now I see it. <laughs> it's kind of how it, it, um, it surprises me that way too. It's kind of strange. see how her back looks on it. All right, it's fairly sort of, it's like short on the top and then long on the bottom. So the spaniels have like short hair and then as it goes down their body, it gets longer. So these will be shorter strokes up here, layered. So now I'm going to turn on my background color. This background is not really for the painting. Um, the background color is just there. 
for me to be able to see my details on the white paper because I have a white tail and I have white paper so I need to be able to see the the white fur and how it's ending and so I need to um, have a dark background to work on there will probably be a shadow I usually do my portraits with the dogs on like white but they'll have like a shadow so they look like they're really sitting on it. Once I get this thing, once I get things established, I can kind of go pretty quick. My friend. What's new? Zoe's mom's on Periscope, so that's why I come over here. So she probably won't be here because she's in Texas right now, but she'll see the 
Replay. Oh, I'm trying to uh, get back in my work groove. It's been really crazy this month. The um, Zoe, this dog's mommy. <laughs> but um. She's, uh, she's visiting her daughter in Texas. She doesn't live in Texas. But, uh, like, since I've gotten back from vacation, things have been crazy. Ah, oh, you're in Texas. Whereabouts? I've never been to Texas. Houston, the big city. <laughs> She's telling me that it was like 104 degrees or something the other day. I don't know. She's just chatting me with me, with me a little bit because I had to ask for a picture of her dog's tail. <laughs> About 77. I had to message her and say, I need a picture of Zoe's tail. And of course, she wasn't with her dog. So she's like, I'm in Texas and Zoe's at home, but I have some pictures. I hope these are all right. And so I'm working with what I have. It'll be all right. I mean, it's just a tail. It was more for to see how the coloring went on it. It didn't have to be... Um, that great of a picture for that. So I'm just trying to establish some hair direction here. Start building up my layers for this puppy. Finish it up. Get the rest of my money and get it back home to her. But I was on Busker the other night. <laughs> oh, not today, yeah. No. I don't always listen to 80s. This is kind of like um, acoustic. Um, a group called Voice Avenue. Just uh, something to be a little relaxing. After being with those kids all day, I need to relax a little. <laughs> My husband's out to dinner with a bunch of executives today. He had to take a bunch of people out to dinner. So, I have uh, lots of studio time when I got home from work today. I told the other kids, ah, it's leftovers or whatever you make. Every man for himself. And then I just kind of locked myself away in here. Because I miss my studio days. And I've had this portrait since 
I didn't really start it till when I got back, but it's been almost a month, and it's like, no, that's too long. Even though she, the, Zoe's mom's like, take your time. Of course she wants me to take my time, because she doesn't want it to be messed up, but I hate keeping, I hate, I hate going back to her with all these excuses. Oh, well, it's Easter, and I've had to travel back, and oh, I've been working every day, and it gets lame after a while. Even though they're true, so they're not like made up excuses, but it's still, it's kind of lame after a while. And I have another one I'm working on too. Thanks for sharing. So look at you checking out over on Periscope, huh? I feel so out of touch now. It's like I knew that would happen. I go away on vacation, and then by the time I get back, I feel like I've missed so much. I don't know what's happening over there anymore. And I'm like, oh, I feel like it's like it's like I have to start all over again, getting to know people. It's very depressing to me. <laughs> I'm like, no. hard enough as it is. I know I'm not doing like superhero art or something or cartoons or whatever that everybody likes watching. My stuff takes a long time. All those young kids, the instant gratification. No patience. <laughs> Nobody has any patience. But see, this has come a long way already. Which, when people first started watching, they were like, it's like blobs of color. And I'm like, yeah, eventually it all starts coming together. I just pick away at shadows and shapes, and it's hard to explain it. Because sometimes I get frustrated and I'm like, ugh. And then all of a sudden I'll be hanging out with you guys and I'll look up and I'll be like, oh, there it is. <sighs> oh, yeah. Well, I get that all the time. They're like, well, why don't you do this and just copy and paste that and put the texture? Because that's not, that's not how I paint. Hi, Queen. How are you? If I did, it would look totally, it would look digital and not painted. You know? I mean, that's why some of that art looks, you know, yeah, it looks cool. I'm not saying it's bad. Well, like, one way is better or the other. It's just, um, I think my paintings, a lot of people don't even want, which gives digital a bad name, honestly, because... Some people think that's all it is. I fight that all the time that um, digital art is art. I paint every bit of it. But even people who don't paint, it, paint every bit of it, it's not like the it's not like the computer program magically draws your art for you and comes up with the concept but 
have to keep educating people, which is one reason why I love live streaming, because people can come and see me actually paint it, and I'm like, yes, I paint just like somebody would, I generally paint, just like somebody would with a paintbrush, except my paintbrush is attached to my screen here. And it's about the simplest way to um, describe it. So blend this black in. But I noticed that even with my own kids, it's like um, everybody wants it now. There's like no patience to wait. And it's like, guys, you have to, some things need to be worked for. <laughs> Some things need to be worked for. Tell when I'm doing this, I'm just always thinking about um, what direction would the hair be laying in this part of the body, and how would the color sort of blend. And so I'm just kind of randomly throwing these hair marks down, basically hoping I get the look I'm looking for. <laughs> I'll blend as I paint it. Because I'm still going to create darker and highlights, which will then help make this look rounded. So I want it to be a little lighter here because this is where a rib cage would be. And so when the dog's ribs are showing through the skin, it's going to glisten just a little bit lighter. Whereas down here, as it's curling under the belly, you're going to get a different, a darker color. That's why it helps when you make um, different brush strokes with slightly different colors. They'll blend naturally and then you'll get a more natural look. Oh, this one? In hours? I'm not sure because I don't really keep track of it. Uh, this one seems like I've been working on it for a while, but it's because it's been, um, I haven't had as much time. So it's been like little bits of time here and there. And then I've also been going through a little bit of technical difficulties, which really suck. Um, my video card is um, has been acting up a little bit. So there's been some things I've done, and then it's screwed up, and then I didn't save it. and So I'm, I'm consciously saving very often right at the moment. And um, we are in the process of researching... A better video card one that will this is a very demanding program my art program and uh, as such I mean it's all I have on this computer is this art program but um, I do very high resolution detailed work okay 
so it's been acting up a little bit like a little leggy and um, a couple times I've gotten like blotches on there that I didn't do they just show up from the way it's like saving and it's oh, frustrating to no end And so it's been going back and forth and I've, I've done like an hour what was it the other day I did like an hour and a half of work and then it like screwed up and I can't save it that way because the red marks and the unblurry like pixelization stuff will show up so I had to just like dump it all and come back and start it over and it's no fault of this portrait it's uh, my fault so it's not you know Or my comp it's my system's fault right at the moment. But it, yes, it's very frustrating. So you can see how much darker this is than that. This white will eventually have parts that are this much white. I'm just um, building up all the layers underneath the white so the white will have something to play off on and that looks so flat. Start adding so right on the edge. I just want to be a lot of little, I want to see those little loose hairs up there. Thanks for stopping by. So I want this to be a little darker in here, but just a couple hints. You see how I'm starting to build up a little bit of the layering.
but this um this program does a really good job of so these oils even though they're digital they'll act very much like real oil paint where the more layers I build up the whiter it'll get the more texture I'll have so that's how I can build these layers So right now I'm not worrying about this because the tail's gonna come over. Ah, oh. till you come back. Home. I don't think I've ever watched on <laughs> um, my desktop, mostly because my desktop I'm always painting on it. <laughs> So, literally when you get down to the ends, you just want those nice little loose hairs, and it's just like a little twitch of your hand, and you don't want to really control it too much, because it will not look nor natural if you do. So it's literally building like the layers of hair, just like the dog has a bunch of layers of hair. <laughs> So I'm going to add a little bit of white into the black because usually there is always a little bit of that undercoat that comes through plus right where the highlight is it's going to um, give me that little glisten and then when I put the black on top of it, the tail's nice and long, so I need nice and big. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I know I've been busy. I've been on vacation and um, working a lot. So I have not had as much time. I 
to be out here. Thank you. Here, I'll show you. Oh, it's gonna be a full view. It's still not a full view. Let me back it up a minute. <laughs> there it is. This is Zoe. I'm still building up the colors. So this is going to deepen and have a variety of colors in it. Um, this is not the background. The background is just there for me to be able to see my edges right now. It's probably going to be a white background with just a black um, shadow from like where the dog's sitting. Did you? Have you been practicing? Which program? Which Corel program do you have? Is it Painter? Well, there's Painter and there's Draw and there's different. Is it is it Corel Painter? Mm-hmm. Painter. Okay. That's what I use. This is um the 2017 painter. This is the digital oils. I love it. What's your favorite medium on there? Which fox? The star fox? You'd like use the watercolor? Do you use the real watercolors? The ones that like blend and bleed and everything? Yeah, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so what video card do you have? Because my my um, watercolors, when I use my watercolors, I get really bad lagging. Like it, it sometimes it'll just freeze, and it's it's so frustrating that it's not even fun to use. So that's why I avoid um, the digital watercolor. Let me save this really quick. I'm in the market for a new video card. Because it's very frustrating to me. Have you have you um painted on scope with it yet? Do you have any scopes up? Oh, Super Mac. Oh, right, so you have the Apple version then, huh? So I'm on Windows, and I don't know if that. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I'd like to see how it works. I'd love to see it. Because there's not too many people who actually... There's not a lot of people who actually digitally paint. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people who do either photo manipulations or they're doing like the real anime uh, stuff. They're not really using um, the painting mediums. And so I don't see a lot of people who actually paint. Let's see. Mm. Is it? I wish I got to go to school. I didn't get to go to school. Let's see. Star Fox. I'm looking for him. Well, yeah. If you have the computers at school, they have that all set up like that. If that's what you're going for. Well, there he is. There he is. <laughs> I know it's really expensive. Like the, the the one video card that I probably should have to like really whip everything out professionally and not like have any problems. The video card's like eight hundred dollars, and I'm like, um, I'm not to the point where just the video card. I'm gonna buy an eight hundred dollar video card, you know. As it is, I used my son's student ID to get the um 
the college discount for Corel Painter because that program's like four hundred and fifty dollars. But you'd have to buy like a three thousand some dollar computer or something. You know, it's 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 crazy. Like the computer that it wanted. Um, yeah, I, I am upgrading my video card. I'm spending about four hundred dollars to get a new video card. So it's um, a new one that's sort of up there and should. But you know. I don't make enough money to go. If I made enough money, I'd have a Cintiq and all that stuff up here. I, mean, <laughs> I don't make enough money for all that. No. What is that? Look, now we're going to talk shop. Let me see what else I have Cintiq Companion. Is that the one that's, um, like the, the, um, Hi Andy, is that the one that's like the uh, iPad Pro sort of, where you could like take it with you and draw mobily? Okay, yeah. How much are those things? Like five, six thousand? I don't know. They're really expensive. That would be like the dream, but I don't make enough yet. I need to somebody can give me one. <laughs> yeah, they're expensive. Yep. Yep. We're talking, I'm sure it is. Have you used one? Lucky you. Lucky you. We're talking shop, Andy. I'm jolly, I'm so jolly. See, this is why I need to go to school. But then if I went to school and I got all that stuff, I would be like, um, I would want to buy it then, you know? That's what I'm saying, I get spoiled. Um, we were talking iPad Pro. Do you have an iPad Pro? We're talking iPad Pro and the Cintiq Companion, which is like the window version of iPad Pro, sort of. Yeah. Art of Otega here, he does digital art as well. And he just got on, um... He just got on, uh... Corel Painter stuff with his schooling. Which... What's new? What did I do that's new? I don't know what I've done that's new. Surface Pro. Well, but what does what program does Cintiqs run? They don't they don't run Mac programs, do they? Is that a Mac program? Sam learned I haven't even looked in I have not even researched those. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I haven't even researched those because there's no way I can afford one at this point. Let's flip through some art. Let me show you what I've done recently. I don't know how long you've been gone. Oh, here's some of my little ink drawings. You can just look while we talk. Let's see. That's a new one. I haven't been on here for a while. So it's new. That one's kind of new. These are my little note cards. So they're done on three by five. Thank you, Andy. They're done on three by five um, note cards, or basically, I just kind of sketch them out so they're really small. And then they look nice when they're hung up. Like I have a couple of them. These are getting ready to get hung up. I'll put them in these little frames and hang them in groups on my wall. The ones that I like. <laughs> I don't always like all of them. Oh, that's my that, that's my um. Yes, the art's on every Saturday. This is my studio wall right now. Look, see it. <laughs> That's my chocolate wall right now. <sighs> Thanks. Um, there was a couple Saturdays like we didn't do it. We didn't do it Easter weekend because people were traveling. Um, I mean, there was like a couple weekends that it was just too busy to do it. That's old. This is newer. Uh, let's see. 
old, old. That one's new. I like playing with the um, digital texture on here. I use the, um, the impasto brushes and it like raises them up and I can play around with the texture. Uh, yeah, these are all painter. So these brushes are really cool. Let me see if I can zoom in. So you can see how it creates the, I can create the texture with the digital brush. So I play around with that. There's like lofters and, oh well now it's, hang on. Let's see, what else is new? Like this too, this fashion illustration. I did all the um, all the appliques are are with an emboss brush that I used. So it's all digitally raised off to give it the depth. It's pretty cool. Mm, let's see. There, kitty, kitty, kitty. These are some new ones I've done. I don't think you've seen these. Andy's probably seen them on my IG there. Because I know Andy follows me on IG. Thanks. The all white challenge. I hate all white. <laughs> uh. Then you should have seen all these. Did you see all these? Tell me if you have. I have not done 3D design. Um, that's a Z brush. That program Z brush. It's pretty. It looks like it would be fun, but that's really pricey too. The Z brush. And I don't know what I'd do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I would do with it though. I don't have a a printer or anything like you do. As that stuff becomes more mainstream, maybe, and more affordable, I might play around with it. If I ever go to England, I'll come and visit you. <laughs> you can... <laughs> Andy, I'll just show up and we'll play around on your printer. You can show me how it's done. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you get. I saw a printer the other day that did, like, um, 13... 13 by 12s or something like that. I was like, wow. Well, that's true. But then what do I do with it to make it, you know, like, to my advantage, you know, just like a picture. I'm trying to find newer stuff here for... Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. People like to have something physical go. That's the problem I run into with digital art. Even like, even when I make prints, like. Oh. So there's that. That's the digital image, okay? Okay, I'm going to. I'll go check that out. Sketch fab, sketch fab. But okay, so here's here's a digital thing, and here's prints. These are my actual prints. But you try to get somebody to, um, I mean, look at the detail I get on my prints. But people are like, oh, it's still a print. I'm like, well, my painting is digital, so how am I gonna? I mean, how am I going to give you a paint? Of, okay, so here's this one. Look at it. There it is. This is the print in my hand, and I try to get this concept across to people of how I, how I print out on a... Um, I mean, you can see I use linen paper. So I have, there's marks in there, so it sort of looks like it's on, painted on a canvas. It's a high resolution. Yeah, well, 
Dude, I had these on an auction thing for $25. I had them for 25 bucks. And I still got the, I still had people questioning me about the legitimacy of an art print. I'm going, it's a print. A texture printer, so I'd have to look into that, I don't know. But, I mean, I show the texture, you can see it in there. You frame it and look at it, it's going to look the same. And I know that it's not, you know, I don't know. But, see, in the dark ones, you could see the texture on the paper a little better. But this is hard, 60-pound um, linen paper that I use. But, so, I don't know. Numbered and signed. <laughs> right? Numbered and signed. What it is is people want, people want your life for $5. I've only been really putting my name out there for about a year, Andy, so I'm not really discouraged. I do what I like. I have some connections. Like I said, I right, that um, dog I'm working on, this is, you know, it's a dog. A comic. Oh, you, you mean take my Star Fox and Donkey Kong and stuff? But then I run into the, I don't want to get in trouble with Nintendo. Nintendo's notorious for coming after people. I mean, this is for my son to hang up in his room. But, um, yeah, Nintendo is notorious for suing me. Thanks. Yeah, and I really don't think I charge... I probably don't charge enough for him, to be honest with you. But, I mean... $60. It's a $60 portrait. You get it printed on an 8x10, you know, 8x11 sent to you and I give them the digital file so they can take the digital file and print it on a big ass canvas to hang above their uh yeah I know hang it above their uh fireplace or something if they want yep a couple photos so like hang on um so I create a, I create a project folder and I collect um, a handful, five or six, whatever, photos. And then I create a sketch. When I get sketch approval, I get half a payment. And I always keep everything documented. So I, and then what, so once they approve the sketch, which that was the sketch I started out with, then, um, I'll start the painting, and then when it's done, they give me the other half. But so, like, I have, like, this face. And this body. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. If it was real. But, and then the thing is, is, but real oil painting, like, the paint and the canvas and all that would probably cost me almost $100 of my own materials. You know, so that's why they're that expensive that people don't understand. Oil paints, like good quality oil paints and canvas is really expensive. So I do digital. So I take these photos and I um, put them in. Like this one I just got today so I could see the tail and the markings here on the back. And then I put them together. Yeah, and messy. Yes, yes. And you bracket brushes because oil paints are terrible on brushes. And even if you clean them with turpentine and stuff, they get all messed up. And yeah, there's like a whole lot of other stuff. So I figure I'm painting digitally. I, um, I can't print out super large, so that also saves in my uh, shipping costs. But that's why I send them the digital file. Because they could take that digital file to any Walmart or Staples or whatever and have it put on a wrapped canvas if they so desire. 
because that's the one bonus of doing custom work is that it belongs to that person who else is going to want a, pi a picture of that person's dog you know but I don't know because I mean who would buy a picture of some random dog though that's what I'm saying you know like meh. I asked for permission to use it on my social media so I'll really use it for yeah, well, then they can get one of their own from me, from a, you know. <laughs> they can get one of their own from me. I'll make them a new one. I don't know. It all depends on where they go um, and what they were looking for. Each dog has, see, I'm a dog owner, so I understand. Each dog has its own personality, which is what makes it your dog. It's why I always really emphasize the eyes, and I'll spend a ton of time on those eyes, because the eyes are what, you know, brings across, that's my dog, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of them that aren't, aren't for anybody. They're just for me that I practice because I've been practicing all the dog breeds and the cat breeds. So a lot of them are just my own practice, but I just use them to promote myself. So I'll find stuff to do. Yeah, sure. Oh my god. So you'd see it's just a bunch of lines. A bunch of multicolored lines starting to blend together and building layers. So then when you get in here, thanks. So you get in here, it's the variety of colors and lines. So that's why I have no problem. It's um, I paint at uh, 1,200 ppi too. So I'd have no problem if they went and made it large. Yeah, that's true. But that's why everybody has different styles of art. Thank God, if we were all the same, it'd be so freaking boring. <laughs> Of practice and I'm a I totally love animals that's why I love animals a lot more than people <laughs> mostly I hate saying that but it's true I've had some people say why don't you do portraits well I do the I do like the outfits I love doing the but it, it's like I focus more on the clothes than the actual person even though I make a likeness of the person but eventually maybe I'll get bored. But like, uh, if anybody here knows Karen Orr, she's warned me. So Karen does amazing bridal fashions. and But that's all she does every day, sometimes seven days a week. And she hardly ever gets to paint what she wants to paint anymore because um, she's so well known and famous for these bridal fashions. And... She has people messaging. She gets like messages all the time. She's like three. She has people waiting three months for her to do their bridal design, you know. And so she's told. She told me way back last year, "Be careful what you wish for." <laughs> so one day I'm gonna be stuck just doing all these dog portraits and be like, "Oh, I just want to paint a flower." But I can make my own schedule. And I don't have to pay bills with my art money, so <laughs> I do have that advantage. So his. Yeah, kind of. But, you know, 
she she gets like a hundred and fifty dollars for a watercolor. I have a cup. I have one on my wall right now. I have one in my bedroom. Hand. I have one in my bedroom and I have one up here. So see this? That's a Karen Orr. And she adds the sparkles in there. It's all really good. She sent me two of her old. She sent me two of them. Just because she had some extras, and so she sent me a couple. But I'm like, she basically she like gave me like three hundred dollars worth of art. I was like, geez, Karen. I'll hang it up on my studio wall though. <laughs> I guess over, she does a lot of stuff for, um, like the big court, like the big designers who design for the Oscars and everything. The one that's in my bedroom is, um, a dress that's, that was made for Paris Hilton to wear to the Oscar Awards one year. And then, um, a lot of, uh, high-end bridal, high-end bridal gowns, like fancy fancy smancy and they, they it's a gift so a lot of the designers who design dresses specifically for somebody will have Karen do a illustration for them and then they gift it to the person and it's kind of like a little you know and so then and now she's really popular over in um, Australia those people spend like the these mega money <laughs> mega money weddings and so what do you get the person who already has everything? So she does a lot of like first anniversary gifts and things. But most of her, most of her business is um, overseas. Yeah, makes sense, right? Well, like the most recent one she did, I can't remember who it was. Um, some Adrienne chick. I think, I think she used to be engaged to Rob Kardashian, and now she's like on the talk or something. Anyway, she recently got married in Paris, and so the people that she chose to design her wedding gown were these, um, you know, high-end designers out in LA or whatever. And so then they gave uh, photos of her fittings to Karen and had Karen do one of her illustrations and then they gave it to the bride as like a thank you for the business and the exposure or whatever, you know, because they want them to come back and buy more and they want to get on their social media feeds and whatever it was. So Karen got paid to do that. <laughs> and then when it got posted on that girl's social media feed, um, she got no she got no credit for it. The designers took all the credit for the painting. She was oppressed. That doesn't happen often, but that was that was not it was a big drama. Well, Karen has like 56,000 Instagram followers. <laughs> Something crazy like that. No, it's not right. So all she said was, um, just wait for them to come back and do it again. She won't do it. She won't work with them again. Yeah, it's a really good number. I'm almost, I almost have a thousand and I'm super excited. I'm like six or seven people away from a thousand followers on Instagram. And I'm like, So she inspired me to do these. So 
I paint them digitally and I print them out and then I paint on top of the printout and add glimmer and shine. <laughs> So this is pretty much what this dog is going to look like. I just have to build up the colors. So I'm really happy I got this far tonight. I did not think I would. I was having a real... I just have a home printer right now, but I use archival, I use archival ink in it. It's a... I just got a new one. My husband just bought a new one this week. Oh, uh, I think it's an Epson. I don't know the name of it. But it has like already ink that I use. And... Our old computer is now for what anybody in the house. So. I also have a friend who lives down the street who works for Heidelberg, which is a really big print company. And he has a pretty decent setup in his garage um, that if it really came down to it for something big, I could probably do it. Yeah, they do cost big money. I'm just not there yet. I would, like I told my husband, he was like, we were looking at stuff and I was like, heck yeah, I'd love to have, you know, X, Y, Z, but I do not have the money to make that affordable to me right now. So, and I don't do enough work yet to make it, um, a reasonable expense I'm gonna say yeah it's crazy my like I said my friend on the street he has a really good printer and he has one that can print like 16 by 20s and things like that and I keep saying he's out of town for so much it's my best friend's um, boyfriend they live down they live like four houses away I mean, he has his own little business where he um, prints um, on tiles. So he does like decorative tiles and uh, like cutting boards and coasters and things like that. Oh, it's pretty high. I mean, he works for Heidelberg, so I don't know what he got, he has in there. I know this right here is a 12 ppi, my printer prints out pretty close to that, it's like over a thousand something. So, here yeah. I have my dogs printed out, not framed here. Where are you, puppy dog? Where are you? So, hang on, let me. So, this is, these are my puppies. This is Chewy, and this is Coco. And this is the printout. So it prints out pretty good. Yep. So I made, I did, I painted this for my son when he moved out. So he has a, a painting of um, the puppies at his new apartment. Because he lives out of state, so he doesn't get to see them very often. And then I liked it so much I had to make a copy for myself. I just don't have a frame for it yet. And then of course, there they are. My little puppies. <laughs> well, here they are smaller. That's as big as I can print, though, at home. You know, it don't, it, I don't have a big size printer. And then I'd have to pass it on. So instead of passing the cost on to everybody because I print them large at a big printer. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. That's a... Um, So instead of passing it along, I just let them have the JPEG file. They get the high resolution JPEG file, and then if they choose to take the extra expense of um, printing it, that's on them, and then they don't have to pay to have it shipped because having a large, having a large painting shipped, 
is going to cost another 30, 40 bucks, depending, maybe even more, depending on where you're sending it to and what it's printed out on. Aww. These are all my practice prints. I usually toss these in when somebody buys something. I'll toss in a couple extras for them. Because I, I just, you know, I don't like wasting paper. So I just have all these little extra stuff laying around here. My internet's going in and out for some reason. Probably because it's storming. It's starting to storm here. Oh, that's annoying. I know I am. <laughs> I know. I need a I need someone to run the business and I can just paint, but you know, I understand and I like doing it for people and then I don't want it to be too intimidating, you know, like where it's uh I you know those little portraits, I'm doing those for like, I have those for sale on my shop for like $15. Everybody should be able to afford art. I know they do, and then you have to pay them too. I don't make enough. I don't make enough. Just in my little house. And I'm not a fine, I mean, I'm not like a, really a decorative fine artist. I do... I do this to make people happy. All right. I'm probably gonna make this a little darker, but this is gonna go away. Mm -mm, I can get rid of this and this. And we're going to put it background. I need my airbrush. Airbrush! Which one do I want? Ba -ba 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 -ba. I think I want this one. So I'm going to play around with the shadows a little bit. Okay. Have a good night. Thanks for visiting with me. I totally appreciate it. Always love hearing from you. First. <laughs> good night. I'll see you around. I just want a little bit of a shadow. And I use this airbrush because I can build it up very slowly. Make it nice and... I kind of want it to look as natural as like the dog sitting as I can.
And I also do this for another reason too, because um, if it had a nice dark background, printing would be a pain in the butt. So I just kind of want them to pop off the page a little bit. Give him some nice dark shadows right under him. Slowly fade it out. And a little bit of a light shadow behind here. Welcome back. Brushing now. I'm gonna make the back a little darker, but I'm just working on the. I think the tail needs to be a little whiter too. I'm trying to get my. There's gonna be a slight shadow out here from the head. Doing it very lightly because I don't want it to come out too dark. I never thought I was going to get this far on this today. I thought I was way farther down the line than completing it. I'm almost done, I think, though. This is one of my favorite brushes. It's called the Just Add Water Blender. It's just like taking a little bit of water and brushing it over your paint so you get those really little light, subtle. So this is pretty much, I think, what this is gonna look like. Yep, that looks pretty good. few more details of darkening and lightening up in here and then I'll probably sign my name like right in here right in there very small and it should be ready to go uh, all right well it's after eight o'clock here 
So I am going to go and catch some dinner. Not actually physically catch it, but make myself a salad or something. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciated it. And it was nice to catch up and um, connect with people back here on Periscope again. And um, for my replay people, please follow me. And um, I hope to be sharing some more art with you soon. Thank you. Bye, guys.